Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sneha Shetty, Clinical Director, Chief Fertility Specialist, Laparoscopic Surgeon and Gynecologist, practicing here at Vriksh Fertility, HSR Layout, Bengaluru. So usually after an embryo transfer, if it is not successful, we again go back and check whether your stimulation has gone properly or not. How the quality of the eggs were, how were your embryos and should we change the stimulation in order to make certain egg quality better? Can we do something in order to change the outcome for it for the next embryo transfer or for your next IVF cycle? So what could be the cause why your embryo did not stick to your uterus? Number one could be a problem in your uterus itself. Like if there is any kind of infection in your uterus, be it tuberculosis or any other infections, we have to rule out that. Number two, in the uterus itself could be abnormal uterine shapes. Like how we have a septum in between our nose, the same way we have certain septum in the uterus also for certain people, which we call as uterine septum. If in case something like that is there, we may have to go through vagina inside your uterus through a procedure called hysteroscopy and remove that septum that is called septal resection so that we have to check sometimes some people are born with abnormal uteruses like they have two uteruses or they have two horns of the uterus or they have a uterus which is bent towards one side like this we have different abnormalities in the uterus as well so we have to check whether there is something like that and rule out that condition also also we have to rule out certain immunological conditions wherein your body itself rejects the pregnancy or the embryo thinking that it is a foreign object which is entering your body. So in certain conditions like that we have to do further testing to rule out immunological causes prior to the next embryo transfer or the next IVF cycle. Apart from this we have to check whether the egg quality was good or not, whether the embryo quality was good or not, how was the sperm. We may need to assess the sperm as well and do additional testing like DNA fragmentation test. So in DNA fragmentation test what we do is we check whether they are DNA damaged sperms. How many percentage of them are there in the entire semen sample? Normally because of all these lifestyle factors, pollution, pesticides and all this, generally all the men do tend to have 10 to 15 percent of the entire semen sample will have this DNA damaged sperms. If it is more than that, then the chances of that sperm being injected into the egg or doing IVF with it will be on the higher end. So such embryos usually will have some DNA problem and they do not implant or even if they implant they tend to cause miscarriages. So we have to rule out that the DFI is not very high. So sperm testing also is important. You can do that. So along with that you also have to rule out whether there are any genetic chromosomal problems which are present in the embryo. So genetic problem if it is present in the embryo. Even such embryos will not usually implant or even if it implants will not continue to be a healthy the pregnancy. So in such conditions we advise to undergo a test called pre-genetic implantation testing. PGTA testing which will rule out any kind of aneuploidies which are present in the embryo which is nothing but genetic abnormalities like Down syndrome etc are ruled out before placing the embryo into the uterus of the female partner. 